Hey everybody and welcome back to my kitchen. Happy Sunday to you all and if it's your very first time watching, welcome and thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode of No More Mondays. My name is Tamisha and today we are making Sunday dinner consisting of Salisbury steak with a homemade onion and mushroom gravy. We're also going to make some homemade mashed potatoes with a side of vegetables and to wrap it up you guys we are making an incredible peach cobbler from scratch. So I'm going to take you step by step along the way to show you how to make this delicious comfort meal for your family in no time. So let's get started. All right, you guys, so we are going to get started on our mashed potatoes. So here I have about eight potatoes. Um, there's four of us, so I'd like to do maybe two per person. So eight potatoes. We also need some chicken broth as well as some salt and pepper, half and half, sour cream, you need some butter, you need your potato masher, as well as a pot to boil your potatoes in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and get our potatoes washed up good. You can see they're dirty, so we're gonna get them scrubbed. Uh, washed up, I'm actually going to get them peeled and chopped, and then we're gonna get start getting them boiled. All right, so let's get our last two potatoes chopped up and I'm just chopping them before we boil them it just makes the cooking time a little bit faster and in our pot I have about four cups of water and two cups of our chicken broth and the reason why I add the chicken broth is you have if you have any opportunity to add any extra layers of flavor to your dish by, you know, maybe replacing some of the water with chicken broth, then, uh, you know, it definitely can't hurt anything. It actually <laughs> add a little bit more depth to your meal. So we're going to boil our potatoes in water and chicken broth. And when we start mashing our potatoes, we're going to use chicken broth as well as the half and half, half and half as our liquid. So got eight potatoes right here chopped up. I'm going to carefully get them into our water and chicken broth. Ooh. <laughs> Be careful, like I said, to get it into your water and chicken broth. And we're going to just let that boil until your potatoes are fork tender. And while that's boiling, we're going to get started on our Salisbury steak. So let's get started on our Salisbury steak. In the bowl, I already have two pounds of ground beef. I'm using the 80-20. And I have about a quarter of a cup of chopped parsley, two uh, teaspoons of minced garlic, one teaspoon of granulated garlic. I also have some salt and pepper to taste, as well as a quarter of a cup of breadcrumbs. Now, I just used toast and um, crumbled it up. Um, but you can, you know, if you have breadcrumbs, you can, but toast works just fine. <laughs> and I am also going to add in, this is four tablespoons of Worcestershire, <laughs> however you want to say it, Worcestershire sauce, and two tablespoons of tomato paste. So we're going to add that as well. I'm also going to add in two eggs. Get those cracked into there. And the last thing that we're going to add is one tablespoon each of the yellow mustard as well as one tablespoon of the Dijon mustard. So let's get this into our bowl. And then what we're going to do after is get all of this nice and incorporated. So you can use a spoon if you want for this. I am going to use my good old tools, my hands. So let's get all of this mixed in well. You gotta get your hands in there and get messy. This is going to be really good. As you can see our potatoes are boiling over here. 
And I'm using fresh parsley just because I like to buy it. I usually keep fresh parsley in a refrigerator as well as fresh cilantro, but you can definitely use um, the um, dry parsley if you like to. And I only added a little bit of salt because we're going to make a gravy for this and I don't want to add too much salt into um, the patties because the gravy is going to have, a salt, have salt in it as well and I don't want to overdo the salt. Like I tell y'all every uh, recipe video I have, i got to watch for sodium so don't want to use too much of it. Okay, so this is looking nice and combined. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and get this formed into patties. And when we come back, we'll go ahead and start getting um, the Salisbury steak seared off. So we'll be back in just a moment. All right, so I was able to get eight patties out of the um, two pounds of ground beef that I have. I have my uh, nonstick skillet already hot and ready to go. I sprayed it with just a little bit of my olive oil cooking spray. Not a lot, because I'm using 80-20, so it has its own uh, fat in it. So, let's go ahead and get these into our skillet. Hopefully I can fit all eight. <laughs> Let's cross fingers so I don't have to cook this in two batches. Actually, I may have to do it in two batches, but it's okay. So we're gonna get these on and you're gonna cook them about four to five minutes. Oh, that smells good already. <laughs> you're gonna cook this about four to five minutes on each side. And then we're gonna remove them from the heat and get started on our gravy. So. Let's see how many we can get in here. The last one is not going to fit, but it's okay. I can always come back and cook that one once I get a little bit more space after I take these off. So let me wash my hands real quick, and then we're going to let this go for four minutes and then flip them over. All right, so I already flipped these over, and they have about another two minutes on um, this side and then I'm going to remove these from the pan cook that last <laughs> the last patty that didn't fit in here we're going to cook that and then I'm going to get started on my gravy so we're going to let this go for about two more minutes but I'm telling you guys this smells so good <laughs> so but yeah I wanted to also just say while we're waiting for this to cook Thank you guys so much for just so much love and encouragement and support. I read each and every one of your comments um, on the videos and I'm just like, wow. <laughs> it just overwhelms me every time. So hi Kia Now, hi Munching and Chatting, hi Tracy Armstrong, hi Lemon Crinkles, hi Simple Life, uh, hi Have to Have Retail Therapy. I'm hoping I'm not mispronouncing anyone's channel name and I hope I'm not forgetting anybody. Just charge it to my head and not my heart. But I read all of your comments and I think that they are so sweet. So uh, I just wanted to say I hope that everyone that's watching is having an amazing week. And um, yeah, I cannot continue to say thank you so much for watching. I truly, truly appreciate it. I know I've seen a couple of comments about the kids and, you know, just wanted to know how everybody was doing. They are doing great. Um, I even had some comments about my oldest son and I didn't even remember that I mentioned um, to you guys in the previous video. My oldest son is 19 and he is in the Navy. So I'm a Navy mom. Um, but we got news this week. We knew it was coming. Um, but we didn't have an actual date, but I got news um, of his deployment date is coming up um, in July. We actually have a day now um, scheduled, so a little bit of sad news this week. Um, he's actually excited <laughs> to go on deployment, but not mom. Mom is just like, oh my God, now I got to you know, be worried about you. But um, the good news is that he will be coming home for Christmas uh, this year. So you guys get to see him um, in some videos coming up during the Christmas holidays. And so thank you so much for everybody who has concern and have asked about um, all three of my kids. You know, I have my an oldest 19. I have my 16 year old daughter. She is my only girl. <laughs> and of course, the cameraman, which is my 15 year old son, my youngest, um, Nehemiah. 
So thank you guys so much. And uh, I just appreciate all your comments, all of your love, all of your support. And um, thanks so much for watching. So I'm going to go ahead and get these removed from the pan because these are done. Well, they're not done. They're going to finish cooking once we make our gravy. But I'm going to get these out of the pan. And I'm going to get this last patty cooked and then we are going to start on our mushroom and onion gravy and I already turned off our potatoes these are nice and fork tender so I'm going to get those mashed up and show you how I do that as well in just a moment so we'll be back in a second all right so let's get started mashing our potatoes I already added some butter into our pot now for my potatoes, I don't particularly care for um, like a whipped potato, so I'm going to keep these um, a little chunky. I like a chunky potato when I'm eating certain things. Certain things I like to whip, but today we're going to go with the chunky. So I'm going to mash them, but not whip them. And a simple way to whip your potatoes is just to do it with either your hand mixer or you can put it in the, um, your stand mixer, put all your ingredients in and just set it and it will come out nice and smooth and creamy for you. Okay, so what I'm going to do is add in just a little bit of salt. I'm using sea salt because I am out of my pink Himalayan salt, which is actually my favorite. I'm gonna add a little bit, not too much because we already have butter which has salt in it already. And we're using our chicken broth. I'm gonna add just a little bit of that into it. And then I'm also going to add just a little bit of garlic powder. You can either use the granulated garlic or you can use your minced garlic and pepper. I like a lot of pepper on my potatoes. Get this ground into it. All right, and then I have a container of sour cream. I'm gonna add about a quarter of the container. And then just oh, just a little bit of the half and half. Looks like I didn't have that tightened completely <laughs> when I started shaking it up. Okay, so we're just gonna get this nice and combined. And actually, hang on, let me grab a spoon. All right, so I got a spoon. <laughs> Make this a little bit easy to stir up. And this is looking pretty good. This is about how I like to see it. Um, so we have our sour cream, we have garlic, salt, pepper, chicken broth, butter, and uh, just a little bit of half and half. And it's a mixture of, it's actually a good combination. It's slightly creamy, but then you also have um, some chunks of potato so this is looking pretty good you guys I'm going to move this over to our bowl and then as you can see in here we have our um, pan drippings that we're going to use to start on our onion and mushroom gravy so let me move this to the bowl and then we come back we'll get started on getting this gravy together all right, so let's get started on our gravy. We are going to need just a little bit of butter, about two tablespoons. Uh, we have one onion chopped up, as well as about six mushrooms. Now the mushrooms are optional. You don't need them if you don't want them. We need flour, as well as parsley, some beef stock, a little bit of soy sauce, salt and pepper to taste, and of course our pan drippings that we reserved from earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and get our onions and mushrooms in the pan first. And we're going to let these cook. I already added in the butter. So it's two tablespoons of butter in here as well as the remaining pan drippings. So we're going to let our onions and our mushrooms cook. 
until our onions are translucent. So let me get a spoon so that I can get that stirred up. And get them coated in all of that pan goodness <laughs> and flavor from our Salisbury steak. And here I have um, going is, let me see if it's boiling yet. Yeah, we just got some corn going, corn on the cob going in here. We got our um, mashed potatoes. And once this... Um, once the onions are translucent, then we're going to bring our gravy together with the rest of the ingredients and then add our Salisbury steak back into the gravy to simmer. So I'll come back on once our onions are translucent and we get our gravy going. All right, so our onions are looking nice and caramelized with our mushrooms. So what I'm going to do is start adding in our flour. This is about three tablespoons of flour and you just want to sprinkle it over your onions and get it coated with the flour and start stirring it along the way. Here's another tip also I meant to say earlier um, before I added the onions to the pan. If you don't like to chop onions up because your eyes are burning from them, a quick tip is to place your onion that you're going to use in the freezer before chopping it maybe about um, 15 20 minutes longer if, if you know if you want to and that will actually help you with um, your eyes not <laughs> water and be crying while you're chopping the onions because I forgot to do that um, I forgot to do that before I, before I chopped this onion and my eyes were burning so bad they were on fire <laughs> so um, you want to add in about a half a teaspoon of dried thyme. I'm using Italian seasoning because I don't have um, dried thyme by itself and thyme is actually in the Italian seasoning so just a little bit of it. And now what we want to do is start adding in our beef broth and this is about a cup right here of beef broth. So we're going to add this in and see how thick it gets and then we want to add a little bit more if necessary. And once it's at the consistency that we like, we're going to add back our Salisbury steak. But this is looking pretty good. And that is a beautiful gravy. I'm going to add just a little bit more beef broth, probably about another half a cup. Sorry for reaching in front of the camera, guys. And I'm also going to add in about a tablespoon of soy sauce. And this is my low sodium soy sauce. And that looks really good. That is a really beautiful gravy nice brown gravy you can see onions in every little bit of it so what I'm going to do now is get our Salisbury steak added back into our pan and then um, we're going to let this cook for about another 15 to 20 minutes and as we go I'm going to spoon the gravy on top of the Salisbury steak. So um, let me get it back into the pan and then I'll um, show you guys. All right guys, here is our Salisbury steak and you cannot tell me that this does not look good. <laughs> so we have our Salisbury steak added back into our pan with our gravy. I have a little bit of fresh parsley in here as well. I'm just taking my spoon and making sure that all of the Salisbury steak is covered. And what I'm gonna do now is get this turned down um, to a simmer and let it cook for about another uh, 15 to 20 minutes in that gravy and I might turn it over once or twice throughout the process so let me turn this on low 
and we have our mashed potatoes like we put, uh, we did earlier. Our corn is looking really good. Ooh, excuse that steam. <laughs> our corn's looking really good. And I might add um, some peas as well. And now you guys, you know what's next. It's time for that peach cobbler. All right, let's get started on our peach cobbler. So I have our oven preheated to 425 degrees. In my baking dish, um, I'm just using uh, this round baking uh, little casserole dish, but you can use the 9 by 13 if you have it. Um, I have about four cups of uh, peaches uh, sliced already. I am using uh, frozen peaches that I've had defrosting all afternoon. So this is about four cups of frozen, fresh frozen peaches. In this bowl, I have um, a half a cup each of brown sugar, as well as our granulated white sugar. I have two teaspoons of cornstarch. And in the peaches, I have about a half a teaspoon of fresh lemon juice. I have a half a teaspoon of cinnamon and a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. So what we're going to do is get all of this into our bowl with our peaches and we're going to get them coated. And that cornstarch is going to act as a thickening agent for our um, filling. So you want to get this nice and coated and then what I'm going to do is top it with a little bit of butter and then get it into our oven and bake it for about 10 minutes and then when we pull it out we're going to add our topping. Alright so this is nice and incorporated and I added just a couple of pats of butter to the top so it can melt down in here and I'm going to get this into our oven and bake it on 425 for 10 minutes and while this is baking we are going to get started on our topping. All right, so we're gonna get started on our topping while our peaches are baking. In the bowl, I already have one and a half cups of all-purpose flour in the bowl. I have one third cup each of white sugar as well as our brown sugar. I also have a half a teaspoon of salt, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. So we're going to get this whisk together first just to break down the brown sugar and get everything incorporated. Then to this, we're going to add in about one stick of cold butter. And you want to, I'm going to actually use my hands when I add the butter in because you want to get it a nice crumbly consistency, kind of like, um, like sand almost. So let me grab our butter and get this in here. And I'm just, oh, making all kind of mess today. <laughs> I'm gonna go in with my hands and start getting this combined. And you just wanna kind of do like a pinching motion as you get it mixed in. And off to the side here, I have about a third a cup of water boiling. We're going to add that once we get this mixture to be like a, you know, like a sand consistency almost. Kind of like, um, you know, like a pie crust would be. When you grab it, you can see it's starting to stick together. And we got about four minutes left on our peaches. Then we're going to top this Top our peaches with um, this mixture and let it bake for about 35 minutes and then it is time to eat dinner. <laughs> so this is looking pretty good. So when we come back, I'm going to um, get my hands cleaned off and then show you what it looks like after we add in the hot boiling water. All right, so I have about a third a cup of hot water. I'm just gonna add this in. This is boiling hot water. And we're gonna mix this all together. And 
And this is our topping. I'm gonna to get it nice and smooth. And we have about two minutes left on our peaches. So I will show you what it looks like once I get this spread all into our dish on top of our peaches. Okay, so our peaches are out and we're gonna go ahead and pour our topping. And I'm gonna stop real quick and kind of push the topping down into the peaches just because I like the crust, the, um, the, the, ooh, <laughs> I like the topping to be kind of combined, you know, all throughout it. So I'm just gonna push it down in there. And then let's go ahead and get the rest of it added to the top. These peaches smell good already by themselves. This would be so good. If you didn't even want to make it into a cobbler and you just wanted the peaches, that would be great with some um, topped with some vanilla ice cream all by itself. All right, so I guess we got about all of it out. Looks good. And just kind of spread it as much as you can to cover your peaches up. And this is going to go into our oven for another 35 minutes on 425. And then when we come back, it is time to eat, you guys. Okay, you guys, we have just about maybe eight more minutes left on this peach cobbler, but I had to take a peek, and then we had to get this camera to show you. Look at how bubbly that is. Oh, my God. I cannot wait to eat it. <laughs> and the house smells just like nothing but peaches right now. So, all right, I'll see you guys in a few minutes. All right, guys, here is our peach cobbler. I let it cool down just a little bit before digging into it. As you can see, the peaches and the syrup and um, that corn uh, starch thickening it up. And we got our nice brown crust topped with some vanilla ice cream. So there you have it, peach cobbler from scratch. All right, everybody, here is our Salisbury steak Sunday dinner. I went ahead and fixed you guys up a plate. I have some homemade mashed potatoes as well as our Salisbury steak with our onion and mushroom brown gravy all made from scratch. I went ahead and added some peas to dinner tonight. We also have some corn on the cob and of course you cannot forget that bubbling brown peach cobbler that we made from scratch as well. So that is our Sunday dinner. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you guys give any of these recipes a try, please comment down below and let me know what you think. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, um, leave comments down below if you like and as always for more videos in the future do not forget to hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell for updates whenever i post a new video and have a happy sunday and thanks so much for watching